Hello and welcome to Paula Armstrong Ceramics. So for today's video, as you can see, I have somebody joining me. This is my daughter, Gracie. Hi. And we are going to build something together. So we had a bit of a chat before the video to see what kind of thing we wanted to build. And we decided that we were going to try and build a birdhouse nesting ball thing. kind of thing. <laughs> um, so we're going to create um, a ball, so a sphere that we're going to shape around formers. And we're going to then decorate it with leaves. Um, I've got an oak tree just out front of the studio. So I've gone out and collected some oak leaves that we're going to press into the clay, cut around and use those to decorate the ball to almost camouflage it. Um, I also have some little sprig moulds that I've made previously with an acorn and an oak leaf um, that we might use as well, that, that we can make leaves that way as well. So we'll do both techniques um, and show you how they work. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I've cut a little bit of a slab, so it just needs a little bit of a roll out to even out the thickness. So as always, I'm going to roll a bit on one side and then turn it over and roll the other way so that we end up with something that's a reasonably even thickness. I want this quite thin because I don't want it too heavy um, where it's going to hang. But at the same time, I don't want it too thin because it needs to be oops, needs to be strong enough um, yeah, that it won't birds. yeah to have birds in it and that it won't break if it knocks against a branch or something like that in the wind. Or a woodpecker guys. <laughs> well, hopefully a woodpecker won't decide to uh, go on it. it that might that break. might well break it. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that one. Um, so we don't really have that many woodpeckers around us. Though. No, we don't. So I think it'll be fine. So there we go. I'll try go for one more yeah. side, rolling out. Gracie, do you want to get the cling film to cover those? It's on the top shelf over there. <laughs> Can't reach it. Okay, hang on a second. So, ooh, what would I say? This is probably between four, four and five millimeters thick, somewhere around there. I'd say probably four, closer to four for the most part. Um, and that should give us, yes, that should give us a good thickness. So I'm going to pull that over here for a moment. And we're going to cover... We've just got polystyrene um, sphere shapes. They, they actually pop together to make a whole sphere. Um, and then you can pull them apart um, for the two halves. And what we're going to do is cover them. That's all right. Put it over the top with some cling film. You can use... Um, paper, fabric, um, what somebody suggested that seems to work really well are the biodegradable um, bags that go inside of food bins, compostable bags. Um, so I've been using that for most of my, my work lately. I'm just using up my last roll of cling film and then the studio is going to convert completely over to those compostable bags. So it's one way of cutting out 
some plastic use in the studio so I will be doing that but for, for this for now you need to cover that side with cling film as well honey so we're going to do both sides no we don't want to put them together I'm going to build them apart so we're going to we're going to have them separate so we're going to build two semi spheres and then we're going to put them together to make the sphere so we're going to cover both of these with cling film once I get the second one. Just about. Mm, yeah, only just, but yeah. Okay. If you do it big enough, if you're going to use something like crumbling, you need to do it big enough so that it can go underneath. Two. So that it gets out the way. There we go. All right. Oh. So. Mm. We're now going to use our Cover them. Can they can they see that though? Not all the way there, no, but that's okay. Hmm. Did I go the way? So I've just cut a bit off of the slab that we rolled out, and we're just gonna cover it. So if you Gently press down all the way around. Kind of looks like like leather going around it right hmm. now. Does a little, yeah. Right. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Now, it's uh, naked gaps. <laughs> we've got some gaps. It's naked. Okay. Right. Yeah, so hole I think I'm going to tip this a little bit this way so that we've only got one gap to fill. And or we can use that for the door, part of the door. We could. Um, we could actually. That could work well. Okay, let's do that. We will do that. So it be right the bottom. All right. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm to going to cut the extra off but you see the angle that my knife is at rather than cutting in that way if I cut down like that it should still have enough clay to go all the way to the bottom of the polystyrene shape So if we lift this up now, we can pop that there. You want to grab a board? And we'll pop that on the board for now. It's quite a natural looking shape for the hole actually. It's a big one place. I quite like that idea that that's going to be the hole in. That was a good idea, Gracie. Well done. Thank you. So I'll pop that on the board and then the board can go over there for out the way for the moment. And we'll do the other half. So I've got the other part of the slab. This is a bit spiral. Do you want to push it down again? I think we might have to fill in some of this one now. Yeah. Okay. So right there. Yeah, this front bit. Oh, Hang on, let me show. You see we've got a bit of a fold going there. We can't have that. We don't want to fold. We want to try and push down without it folding. Because if you get the fold, you, you might rest. trap air in the fold. And air isn't good in clay. Because when it goes in the kiln, hang on, we've got another one going on here. What happens when air goes in the kiln? <laughs> Explosion. Yeah. Well, if it's a big lot of air, it will explode. Basically, because the air um, needs to expand when it's hot, and the clay shrinks as it gets hot. So the air has to find somewhere to go. So it finds its way out of the clay. By exploding it. By forcing it, yes. Okay, so I'm going to trim the same way again. Uh, with the knife facing down, and then 
We're going to use some slip. Do you want to grab the slip pot, honey? Okay, so we want a little bit of this opening it's still there, but it's a bit big, isn't it? It's a little bit, it's a bit too big. So we're going to put a little bit of extra in here. So do you want to pop some slip in either side? Because I, I quite like this bottom here, don't you? Mm -hmm. The little natural fold bit. So we'll just stick a little bit of extra. All the way to there. Don't worry. That'll do. Okay. So we've got some slip on there, like that. I'm just going to pop. Does need to be Actually, let's do it that way. That's probably the better one. We can always trim. Now, because we're adding the leaves. I don't think I'm going to worry about blending that because I think that's pretty cool with the join, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Blend it a little bit. Though, a little bit. Sure. Okay. Stage. Well, we're going to have to trim or tear this edge to match that one anyway. Mm. Mm. So, um, need another little bit for the other side. So we go like that. Do the same thing. You could you want to do the little bit of blending. So that's the same as the other side. There we go. Okay. Right. Now these two semi spheres now need to be dried a bit so that they're strong enough to come off our formers and go together in a bowl. So we're going to take these away and use um, the dryer on them. I use a paint stripper, but you can use a hair dryer or a heater or whatever, or just leave them for some time until they dry out and are strong enough. Don't leave them too long though, and don't dry them too much because if, if you go over so that they're too dry, they'll actually become more delicate rather than stronger, and we want them stronger at this point. So we will be back in just a moment. Okay. So these are now dried off a little bit. As you can see, the color hasn't changed, um, but they feel much drier. They don't feel so wet. You'd agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one feels kind of warm. Yeah, that's still warm from the dryer. But they. But it's much stronger. It is much stronger. You're right. So what we need is for them to be strong enough that we can take the polystyrene out. And they still hold their shape. So you take the polystyrene out and then we pull the cling film off. The pieces of cling film, by the way, can be used again um, for other builds. Ah, but that's not holding its shape completely. So I think we're going to need to dry the inside as well to make it just a bit stronger. Should I take this off? Well, do you want to bring it in the camera so you can... Show it. There we go. That's it. Then you just pull the polystyrene bit out. I right, see we have melted the cling film a bit. It's got a bit, uh, a bit sticky. You should be able That's to just lift. Okay, there we are. All right, and then peel the. It's not completely holding its shape. No. So if we bring the board back. And we pop both of them oh on the board. Gosh, we don't. will take we'll take them over. <laughs> That's all right. We just reshape them, pop them down, and reshape. Now, this has got a extra bit going on over here. I don't think we need this bit. Yeah, you took it underneath. Yeah, don't need that bit. There we go. trim that off. So this is kind of kind of give us a flat area. I think with the we need the hole slightly higher. So I'm going to tip that slightly so we've got a flat area there. And just pop a little bit of scrap under here to try and help hold that lifted so it's the flat area is there on that one. 
And this one, I'm going to hope I can push it out so it's completely round again after it's dried. So we're off to the dryer again. Okay, so now we're back. They're a little bit drier. So they're now holding their shape a little better, but there's still some give so that we don't crack them when we move them. Now, I'm just going to trim these edges a little better so that they can join. So there's a flat top that can be joined. Right, so now we're going to join the two pieces together. Mm -hmm. How do we join? We put little marks in and then put slip around and then stick it. Mm -hmm. It's called scoring and slipping. So do you want to do one and I'll do one? Uh, I think it's okay. fine. I'll do this. So this clay is quite thin, the walls of this is quite thin, so um, you could probably get away with making it a little bit thicker, which would make it a little easier in the build. Right, so we're going to put two holes in line with each other and hope that everything sort of lines up. It's not bad actually. actually you need a little bit of help on the back. If I was a bird, so. I would live in that. <laughs> That's good. I'm just going to pop this. This one out to make it a little bit more. In rubber kidney. We will need a rubber kidney, you're quite right. I got one. And then this one needs to push it out this side. So you've laid the leaf down on the clay, mm -hmm. rolled it in with the rolling pin so mm -hmm. that it's level with the surface, laying the leaf with the vein side down. So there's one, the, it's generally the back of the leaf that's got the vein showing. So you put that down to the clay and roll over it with the rolling pin. And then you've gone around and cut around the outside with a needle tool, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And now you're going to take away the extra clay and peel the leaf up off of the clay that you've rolled out. And it should end up like this or something like it. Yeah, it didn't show, honey. Oh. There, this. that's better. This or something like it. Yeah, that's it. So that's one way of doing oak leaves for the bird feeder. 
and we'll go yeah we also have the sprig tool now the sprig tool needs um, clay that's a little bit drier so not what you're using there Gracie there's a bit on the side there that I've rolled out the round piece right there Gracie <laughs> that's it if you cut that in half so tear it down that middle bit then pop some corn flour with the brush into the mold so that it doesn't stick to the mold, to the sprig mold. Just put a little bit of that on it. So it make sure it goes into all the edges and corners because those are the bits that stick. Then if you tap out any excess back onto the board, that's it, that'll do. And then take the piece of clay that's big enough to cover the whole thing, that's it. Lay it on top and then press it in with your fingers a little bit into each area. So you, you begin to see the outline of the leaf in the clay on the side that you're pressing down. You need to make sure it's pressed in everywhere, otherwise it won't pick up the vein pattern. And then you need to start taking off the excess. Now, I might come around and show you this. Because it's hard to explain. So you use your thumb to take off the excess. So you swipe across the the bit where the leaf is and then take off the excess yeah. like that. You need slightly drier clay for this because we're then going to peel it out of the mold. So you loosen it off and very carefully roll the leaf out of the mold. Now this is a silicon mold which is how come it's so bendy um, and means that we can do this. Gently. And the corn flour just helps it so that it doesn't stick because of course silicon is not porous so naturally the wet clay would stick to it and there we go we have one of the leaves from there so we're just going to carry on making leaves now until we've got as many as we need to cover the wall for the um, birdhouse um, we also have a little acorn mold that we can use to make little acorns and we would do that with the bigger lumps of clay rather than the little ones because we'll, it will fill the mold but the principle is the same we use the corn flour on the mold first and then we put it into the mold that's all right honey i've wedged that you're good <laughs> so a bit of corn flour in the mold with the brush again you don't need this you won't need that much yeah you won't even need that much. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. A bit of corn flour with the brush. Into the mold, particularly the top where there's texture. This only does half an acorn. So that it doesn't have any sections um, where the clay can't come out with an undercut. So, but the principle's the same. You take the lump of clay. Huh? Oh, don't drop the mold. 
<laughs> That's it. Take the lump of clay. Pop it into the mould. Not the big bit, the little bit that you just cut off the end will be enough. That, mu that much will be enough, trust me. And pop that into you know, the big, big chunky bit of it. The big chunky end. Press that into the mould. You want to fill the mould. So for this one, we're after actually the clay to go completely level with the top. But then you do the same thing. So you rub your thumb over the edges to get rid of all of the excess. And tear it off. Don't fold it in, honey. That's it. Just take away all the excess. So you end up with a nice flat back on your acorn. And hopefully it's picked up all of the texture for the top of the acorn and the smooth for the base. And it should pop out. Now this is where a slightly drier clay is a very good idea. Gently. <laughs> Do you want some help? It's getting there. It's getting there. I'm doing that and it's not falling out. No, so. it won't fall out because it is it, it will be a little bit stuck. There you go. If I hold that, you peel it off. There you go. Oh, little acorn. Looks like it's half a little acorn. There we go. So we'll okay. do a few of those to go in with the leaves as well. Make it more like yeah. part of a tree. Yep. So we'll do that and we will come back again. My phone decided to play silly and missed a whole chunk in the recording. So we have put the two halves together. Um, we've stuck them that way. And then I've put an extra strip of clay along the outside of the join on the outside and I'm using it so that it looks a little bit like a branch and I've just put a branch off the top there like that and that reinforces the join. I've also gone along on the inside with a tool because um, I can't get my fingers in far enough and just blended together the two sides of the join as well. It's not very neat in there but it's blended to help hold it together. Um, then after that we have a nice thick leaf that Gracie made and we're using that um, as the loop where we can hang um, this in the tree from. So we're just going to put some rope through there and hang it up into the tree through that position. Now I've scored and slipped this really well to stick it down and when I was pressing so that I kept the imprint from the leaf. I just placed the leaf over the top and pressed on top of the leaf so that the imprint stayed. And I did that on both ends um, so that there was still a bit of a leaf imprint on the clay there. So now we've made all of our leaves and we're going to stick the leaves on in place. And I've also done a few little acorns too. So all we're going to do now is go around the bowl and put a whole bunch of leaves and acorns on where we want them. And we're going to do this scoring and slipping. Although the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to put across this front here. Um, I'll use, I think I'll use this one. Because um, I think this hole is a little bit big. And I want to put... A little kind of ledge for the birds to stand on. What do you think, Gracie? Like that? Yeah, that looks really good. Okay. Especially if they have babies when they're learning to fly, they can put their feet on there and then go. <laughs> That's true. If they can't fly, there we they go. Do that. Okay, so we're gonna score and slip and slip. I was going to use the knife. Okay. But you can use a knife or a needle tool for scoring. So as I'm just sticking the bottom of this down, 
I'm just scoring here. And I'm just going to do a little bit of scoring around here as well. And then we've got the slip. Yep. Oh, sorry, Mom. And on the ball, a bit more. I think you might need to reload your brush there. A bit more. It's very big around this bit. Yeah. Got there we go. I got a beard. Right. right, we're gonna do that around like that so it looks like the leaf's coming out of the of a branch there. And then we'll go like that. Obviously, the harder you press down on the leaves, the more the, the, more the veins will disappear. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully you remember which leaves go on which. Yeah, like you this. can use the leaves to press them in. Because I don't want to. There we go. And I'm, what do you think to a little, one of these little ones across the top like that? Yeah. 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 And make then maybe the other side as well? Yeah, make it a little bit more. Oh, do we want to score? Yes, we want to score. Oh, I'm using an idiot. We want to score. All the way up here. That's it. And some slip. Lovely. Should we do the back of the other on there? There we go. I like curving the leaves a little bit. Make it more like a real leaf. Because mm. if you have a look at the leaves outside on another tree, they are a little bit curved. They are, you're right. And also, aren't we hanging this on the fence? Well, it'll be in amongst the other plants. The plants, but yeah, we it'll will be on the fence. <laughs> You think? Yeah, let's oh. get over there. There we go, that's good. We'll see, we can write that there. Oh, that's okay. All right, what's next? What leaf next? Let's just go sticking leaves on now. <coughs> A little bit, little bit good. Have a bit of shelter in there. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah? Yeah. There we go then. Score and slip. Pop. Why am I holding that? No, 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 no. This, where this one's going. Oh. I'm just going to put this one on first. <laughs> but you can score both, I guess. This feels very tough. Mm. It's dry. Yeah. And slip. Oh, I'm going on first. Yep. That's it. I like getting it on your finger. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Makes it funny. Right, let's gently lift that a little bit like that. This is fun. Right? So. Okay. There we go. And when it rains, if it does rain, it'll do that boat look into the now, into the house though. Well, we should probably put some little holes in the bottom. You're right, for if it rains, so that there's some drainage. <coughs> we'll do that. Okay. Hang on, no. Let's do that once we know where it's going to hang. 
Okay, so let's get all the leaves on first and then we'll do that. So, you're going to put an acorn? What do you think to where those two leaves join? I think a couple of acorns in here, don't you? What I should say is I think personally that the leaves that Gracie made rolled into the clay slabs and then cut around with the pin tool were more successful than the ones that came out of the mold because the ones from the mold, although they were thinner, when I pulled them out of the mold, the clay stretched. So it lost some of the imprint, whereas the imprint on the rolled ones has stayed quite strong. Um, although they are thicker so it's 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 kind of depends what you want from them but personally I think I like the the ones that were rolled out because I like the the nice crisp clean imprint this one's one that the mum made and then this don't one's... have it sticking too much okay you want to protect it a little bit this one's the one that mum made. Yeah, that one's made and from then... the um, mould, from the sprig mould. And, and it's just, I just think they're not quite as, as that, clear and crisp. That one's one I made. Yeah. We have more of the, the rolled ones. Because um, Gracie, the other point is Gracie found those easier to make than the ones in the mould. The mould wasn't quite so straightforward. Right. Next, next leaf. I think we need this side. <laughs> it's very plain here. It is very plain at the back at the moment, which means it would want, it's going to want to tip forward because all the weights at the front. So we do need to put some around the back. Mm -hmm. Don't forget we've got our um, our yeah, branch. Yeah. I think we need to come off of our branch a little bit. If we we can always add another branch if we want to. Yes, please. I'm going to put one here for Zach looks good. Okay. Score and slip.
Okay. There's some extra branches. There we go. So, all right. Add some more leaves on. Are these like this? Are these the same thing? <gasps> That's not good. We shouldn't put the same leaves next to each other. Top tip. Don't put the same leaves next to each other. Alright, no, you put them on. <laughs> you yep. my scoring tool. There you go. Oh, what am I? I'm going to put one over here. I was thinking of putting one. I'm just brushing off her hair. Okay. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so that's our finished birdhouse um, sphere that's kind of camouflaged as an oak tree. So if you hung that in an oak tree, hopefully it would kind of protect the birds from like predators and stuff that want to do this to them. <laughs> Something like that. So that's our finished piece. Um, we will do a video showing how we're going to glaze it 
um, later on because I have a feeling it will probably be a combination of oxides and glazes. Um, oxides? Yes, oxides. So we will um, we will have a look at that next time. Um, and we put the holes in the bottom with the needle tool just so that if the rain got in it, the water had a way to come up get out without soaking the nest on the inside um, and we've got our thicker leaf to hang it by um, it is going to be quite weighty there's a lot of clay in this so <coughs> it's going to need quite a strong rope to hang it and quite a strong branch to hang from um, so that's our finished piece for now and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.